question we started looking at before we rounded up the last episode is what happened when a believer repents? So let's read First John again, First John chapter 1, and we read a couple of verses there. First John chapter 1, we read verses 8 to 10. Remember, this was written to believers. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have no sin, we have not sinned, we made him a liar and his word is not in us. You see, when a believer who has been convicted of sin truly repents, the Holy Spirit does something. The Holy Spirit applies the power of the cross of Jesus, which led leads to forgiveness and then lead to cleansing. Okay, last episode we look at the issue of forgiveness. Today we are going to look at the issue of cleansing. We need to understand, just like these verses that we have read, that forgiveness and cleansing they are like two sides of the same coin. They are like hand in glove and sanctification is the biblical word that encompasses forgiveness and cleansing when god forgives he cleanses god forgives to cleanse it is the same power that forgives us and it is also that power that also cleanses us that when god took us out of the mess it does that so that it can also take the mess out of us so god took us out of the mess so that he can take the mess out of us And it is important for us to understand that. And this is accomplished in our life through the Holy Spirit by the power of the cross. And this is what we know as the power of his resurrection. So I've thrown in another word today, and that is the word sanctification. It means to set apart for special usually godly use and purpose sanctification is not just an hocus pocus religious put on an act type of word no in the old testament it's especially used for priests or item in the temple do you see that word coming back we've talked about this extensively the temple and priesthood so in the old testament uses of that word sanctification it is to set something apart either an object or even human to set apart for special godly use and purpose in the new testament sanctify is the verb form of holy so to sanctify is to make holy to sanctify is to make holy so to be sanctified contains the idea of becoming like god and god is holy Hallelujah. So we need to understand that sanctification is the work of God and is the work of God alone. Sanctification is not something that comes from outside in. Sanctification is something that comes from inside out. It is the work of God. It is something that God works in us and works out of us. It is the work of God. It is achieved by the power of the Spirit using the resurrection power of the cross sanctification is the work of god and it is the work of god alone now when an unbeliever is convicted of sin when an unbeliever truly truly repent he or she is forgiven regenerated and is instantly sanctified make holy set apart from the world set apart for god's use and god's purpose in other words there is steps in sanctification First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are what? Sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit. And you will see over and over again how these processes are connected with the Holy Spirit and with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And such were some of you when we were in the world, when we were children of wrath, when we were enemies of God. He said, but you are washed. How are we washed? By the blood of Jesus. But you are washed and you are sanctified, you are set apart and you are justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of the lord and there is another word we could throw in today but we are going to leave that for now justification hebrew chapter 10 verse 14 for by one offering he had what perfect forever them that are sanctified first peter chapter 1 verse 2 we are elected according to the foreknowledge of god the father through what 
sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So we need to understand that sanctification is first and foremost a status and a relationship that we have in Christ Jesus at the new birth. Okay. Is a status, is a standing. And it's a relationship that we have with respect to God that it is our instant at the point of new birth. And this is the indicative upon which every other thing rests. In other words, this is who we are. This is the indicative. This is who we are. This is what we have in Christ Jesus. This is who we are instantly by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we, 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 we see some of those things in previous episodes. We are saved from the kingdom of darkness. We are translated into the kingdom of Christ, into the kingdom of God. We become sons and daughters of the Most High God. We become members of His family. We were adopted into the family of God. We become God's temple. We are king and we are priest in that temple. We belong to God. And that is a status. That is a relationship that we are born into when we become saved. Then come the second part. The second part is now this progressive work of God in the believer that makes us grow and that makes us mature into Christ likeness, becoming like Christ in every area of our life. So what happens when a believer repents? What happens when a believer repents? The believer is renewed, tr- transformed, and becoming more and more like Christ. You see, the initial sanctification that we got at new birth is just like when a baby is born and the baby had life. There's a relationship that baby has with daddy, with mommy, but that baby has to grow. That life has to push out. That baby has to be renewed, transformed, and become more and more like daddy and mommy. And it's the same thing that we are talking about here. So, And that process, I'm talking about repentance in the sense that we have, like we said the last time, when the Holy Spirit starts putting hand on a couple of things, not necessarily that we are necessarily doing unclean things or bad things. And if we do that, obviously, we have to repent. But is that there are, like we said in the last time, there are work of the flesh, the fact that there is the flesh, there is the world, and that we live in a world that is falling, that is polluted. There are a whole lot of things that we need to renew our mind, that we need to grow into Christ in all things, in our thoughts, in our emotion, in our desire, in our thinking, in our, in our, you know, emotion, our desire, and all those things has to be conformed to Christ. We have to be conformed to Him in all things. And that is a process that is being done by the power of the Holy Spirit. So what happens when a believer repents? He's, he or she is renewed, continue to be transformed, becoming more and more like Christ, becoming increasingly godly and pure. It's a process where we work out what God has worked into us. And we can go on and on. Let's read some couple of scripture to buttress that. So we are going to read Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from one glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So that is the progressive work of of the spirit said even as by the spirit of the lord second corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the presence of the lord that process of perfection is what we are talking about first peter chapter 1 verse 16 talk about us he said because it is written be you holy for i am holy Remember, all these things that we are reading here, these are progressive work of the Holy Spirit in the believer. So we need to understand, just like the the, the work of salvation, initial sanctification in the unbeliever, just like it was achieved by the Holy Spirit, our ongoing progressive sanctification is being achieved by the Holy Spirit. Just the same way that the power that regenerated us is the power of the cross, the same way the power by which we progressively become like Christ is the power of resurrection, the power of his cross. Through the cross, God made a way and provided the grace and the power for us to become his own. 
it is very, very important for us to understand is that God set us in Christ to himself. It is through that cross that God provided the way and provided the grace, the power for us to become in his own and to be progressively transformed into the image of his dear son. You remember the Lord Jesus said that we are the bride of Christ and that the Holy Spirit is what? Washing us by the washing of the water by the word that he can present all to himself without spot or wrinkle. Amen. Now it is important for us to understand this, that God broke sin's dominion over us and now we are free to live unto him. God broke the power of sin. So forgiveness but cleansing. Forgiveness and cleansing. So it's not, a, it's not that God just forgive us and we are still powerless. You know, like we said the other time, like you, somebody was harassing something and you deliver them from the people harassing them, but you leave them in a situation where they can be caught again <laughs> and the, their end result will be worse than the beginning. No, the, the point is this, that when God delivered us, he delivered us not just away from, he delivered us unto himself. And he has empowered us. He has broken the dominion of sin over us. And he has empowered us and progressively empowered us to live a life that honors him. To live a life that glorifies him. And now we obey God because we can. Because he has given us of his spirit. So through the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, we can obey him. And, and that is the truth that the, the, the Spirit of the Lord was trying to teach us when we read the book of Romans, Romans chapter 6. And I'm going to read a couple of, a long one, so pardon me, I'm going to read a long one and just make a make few comments as we go ahead. So I'm going to read from Romans chapter 6, I'm going to read verses 1 to 14, and I'm going to read from the New International Version. Again, like I said, it's a long one. I will just make a few comments as we go ahead. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. By no means. Because God has not only forgiven us, he has cleansed us. And he is progressively sanctifying us. He has broken the power and the dominion of sin over our life. And he has equipped us with his power and continue to equip us with his grace so that we can live a life of holiness. Verse 2 says, By no means, we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Verse 3, Or don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. We too may live a new life. This new life. Let's talk a little bit about this new life. Paul said, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not high, but Christ live in me. He said, the life I live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me. And gave himself for me. You know the life we live. We live by the power. The sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit. Which comes from the resurrection power of the cross. There is power that is made available to us. Through the Holy Spirit. For us to live new life. You know if there is no power there is no life. So he said there is a new life. And that is just because there is a new grace. There is a new power. He said over there that we too may live a new life. And this is very, very important for us to understand that Christianity is not just following rules and regulations. Christianity is actually the power of life flowing through us. It's not a drudgery where we just try to do something by ourselves. This type of life is not something we try to walk up. This is a life that God lives through us. Now, let's continue from verse 5. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like this. So it is this unity, it is this union that we have with Christ. For verse 6, we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. So our anthem now is, I am no longer slave to sin. Because I am a child of God. You remember that song. It's not just a song. It's a reality. This is the reality of our new life. We need to understand this. That the Bible says in that verse. Says that our old life was crucified. That life that was ruled. That was dominated. 
by sin has been crucified now we have a new life we have a new spirit like we said in our previous teaching it said that we should be no longer slaves to sin and that is very very important let's move on verse 8 now if we die with christ we believe that we will also live with him for we know that since christ was raised from the dead he cannot die again death no longer has mastery over him and this is very important verse 10 the death he died he died to sin once for all but the life he lives he lives to god in the same way count yourself dead to sin but alive to god in christ jesus therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey his evil desire do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. There is a power, there is a grace that has been given to us that progressively cause us to mature and to grow and to be like christ okay so we're talking about repentance forgiveness sanctification maturity holiness we are talking about the whole thing here and this is this is christianity this is what god has called us into and we see the same principle in the letter that the lord jesus wrote to the churches as he was writing to the seven churches in the book of revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 and you will see that is based upon the same principle that as christians okay we have been given the grace number one we have been brought into a position a status a relationship but that this is not just a legal standing yes it is a legal standing but it's also actually there is an empowerment for transformation that has come with that position it is just like if you are an army officer or if you're a police officer, okay, you have the position, you have the label, but then you are given the power, you have the gun, so that you can enforce the role. Okay, what use is it if you put a policeman somewhere and they don't have the power and the authority to enforce the law? And it is the same thing that God has brought us into a position, into a right standing with him, into a place of relationship with him. We are children of God, like we said, we are citizens of his kingdom, we are his temple, we are king and priest, but what we saying is that there is also a power of life that we have received and it is on that basis that we grow okay and that as the holy spirit put hand on areas on our life okay this is where repentance comes in areas that need, we need to mature area that we need to repent of we need to change so that the power of god can flow into those areas maybe i have problem with anger maybe i have problem with bad thought maybe i have a problem with fear and we can go on and on we are christians but we still have areas in our life that we need to bring under the control and the power of the cross and we come not run away from god we come and we say we don't try to cover it or we come to confess it okay but then also to trust god for the power because just like we have read in this couple of scripture for sin shall no longer have be your master because there is a power of life in the cross of our lord jesus christ and that was the, what the lord jesus was writing to a number of these churches in fact wrote to all the churches yes two of them didn't really re receive any rebuke and they received encouragement to keep going but quite a number of them had areas in their life that they needed to change let's look at the church at laodicea the laodicean church and the lord jesus wrote to them i'm reading revelation chapter 3 now verse 15 he said for i know your work that thou art neither cold nor hot and he said, I'm going to spew you out. He said, because you say I am rich, I increase with good, I have need of nothing. But he said, you don't understand. You are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. Remember, this is a church. These are people that have come to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But the life of God in them has not flown, has not, has not flow into this area of their life. They still have area of deadness. Even though they have life in themselves, even though they've been brought into a place of status, a place of relationship with God, even though they've been brought into a place of power, but they've not allowed that power to flow into them. There are areas in their life that still needed to be dealt with. What was Christ's counsel? Let's read his counsel. We are going to read the counsel from verse 
18. Now, I've jumped verse 14 to 17, but let's read the cancel from verse 18. The Lord Jesus said, I cancel thee to buy of me gold, tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eyes life, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase them. Be zealous, therefore, and what? Repent. What will the repentance do when we truly repent? It will allow the power of of resurrection through the work of the holy spirit in our heart it will allow that power to flow into those area of our life to forgive us number one and number two to cleanse us to grant us the power so that we can overcome those sins in our life so that we can become like christ in those area of our life and this is what happened when a believer repents we're going to stop there today and by the grace of god we'll pick it up here next time by the grace of god and if you're listening to me tonight and you're not saved let me tell you something if you're not saved then you don't have a savior then you are heading straight to destruction but there's a power to save you there's a power to bring you out of that place of disaster and death and bring you to a special place of relationship that we have been talking about today it's not something you do yourself it's something god has provided for you and for me in christ jesus but he can only give it to you if you want it he cannot force it on you so god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life so you can come to him today confess that you are a sinner you need a savior he will save you he will take the heart of evil stone from you and he will give you a new heart then he will give you his own spirit and then you will come into this special relationship with him and you begin to grow from there increasing and maturing in his grace and experiencing on an ongoing basis the resurrection power of the cross of our lord jesus christ and when this is over you and i will spend eternity with him in the new heaven and the new earth Do it right now.